They say fires cannot start in space itself because there is no oxygen, microgravity. Anything else in a vacuum, it is said, yet inside the confines of a spacecraft and freed from gravity, flames behave in strange and beautiful ways. They burn at cooler temperatures and for longer periods of time in unfamiliar shapes and forms and are powered by unusual, misunderstood, and even unknown chemistry. Without gravity, they say, hot air expands but doesn't move upwards. The flame persists because of the diffusion of oxygen. That's what happens here on Earth, the process of combustion. With random oxygen molecules drifting into the fire, absent the upward flow of hot air, Fires in microgravity, without oxygen, are dome-shaped or spherical and sluggish thanks to meager oxygen flow. Now, don't ever assume that that's perfectly truthful. Science is a theory. I just read what they said. This was held back. Let's take another look at it on the moon. Archimedes Crater. I snuck this in, it's only gonna take a couple of seconds. This is Archimedes Crater. Imagine you're with your 14 inch telescope. Everyone in the world, all the professionals that you've been following all of your life have told you there's nothing up there. And when you go up, you start seeing lots of objects and these objects are never spoken about. Then you start filming them and you see more and more of them. And there are fires on the surface and lights moving around. There's something spectacular that's going on on the moon. Absolutely spectacular. These objects are very close to the surface. Like, I'm going to take a guess, like a thousand feet, maybe a couple thousand feet. Maybe they're high as airplanes. Who knows? It's just, you know, taking a guess. Science is a theory. But what we're looking at is not theory. We're looking at proof. There, it's on fire. There's smoke. It's combusting. You got to agree with me. If you're seeing smoke, it's combusted. Come on, right? Seriously. Now let's look up how smoke interacts in microgravity in space. See, these are things that people don't talk about. Obviously, they wouldn't have to. But when I'm finding these things on the moon, it makes me wonder these things. This is on the moon. It's not supposed to be any smoke rising. Without gravity, they say hot air expands but doesn't move upward. The flame, if there is one, because of the diffusion of oxygen with random oxygen molecules drifting into the air, absent is the upward flow of hot air, supposedly in microgravity. Fires in microgravity are dome-shaped or spherical and sluggish. So, whether this is outgassing we're seeing on the moon or not, hey, we're heading over to the sun, guys. Yesterday's sun, the 17th, and today, as the news are actually talking about the sun, a big coronal um, hole, several coronal holes opened up and facing Earth now, and that's what we're going to look at right now. So for those of you who didn't know, on the moon, there should be no smoke rising off of the surface that way. Unless, unless, yes, that's right, unless there's oxygen. A bit more than just microgravity. There are the sunspots, 2994 over to the left. I'll get some markers up for you. And this is yesterday, the 17th. I do want to show it to you as we were just starting to see it. We won't spend too much time on it, but there's a lot going on. And I also filmed the sun this morning, April 18th, and the sunspots are more apparent. You could see um, the three very large ones. There's some in the center, there's some on the bottom of the sun. And to give you an idea of the seriousness of it all, it started on April 16th. Out of nowhere, um, everyone 
that was watching the sun was surprised by M-class solar activity that was coming from the region 2994. It's a sunspot region that's hiding behind the northeast east limb of the sun. It started flaring on the 16th and kept the X-ray flux above the M-class threshold, which is very strong, for about three and a half hours. And that's not it. Three peaks were officially recorded, M1.2, M1.9, M2.2. Multiple coronal mass ejections left the sun following this activity, but of course, none are directed towards Earth at that moment. Now let's go see the 17th. Let me explain. This is not a regular occurrence on the sun. Everyone's very worried about this. April 17th, two major sunspot regions, okay, 2993 and 2994 have now rotated onto the Earth-facing solar disk. These regions were already very active on the far side. It was no secret that there was a lot of potential and danger towards these solar flares. It's still hard to see how complex these regions are, but considering the numerous class C and M's classes, flares, that were um, have already come from these regions, we know there is potential. The potential came to light the morning at 3.34 UTC time, April 17th, yesterday, an X 1.1 solar flare, which is an R3 strong solar flare, was observed this morning and it came from sunspot region 2994. This is the third strongest solar flare, guys, listen to this, of the current solar flare cycle 24 thus far. A partial halo coronal mass ejection was released into space, but it is not expected to arrive at Earth. It was 90 degrees about, it was just on, off to the corner. It's gonna affect the, some regions on Earth, but we were safe for that one. These two regions remain active though. C-class activity and should be monitored for further flaring activity in the days ahead, and they rotate into a more favorable Earth-facing position. And that's what we're looking at in this video. So you just got a glance back um, in March, just at the end of March, what you just saw for the last 10, 15 seconds. This is today, April 18th, 2022, of course. Now you can see that they're rotating a bit more. We saw it yesterday, I showed it to you at the beginning of the video, the 17th. And we're gonna take, um, again, a quick look at the spots today. They're, listen, they're big. If you wanna know how big they are, they are at least as big as two Earths each of those big black spots that you see is very dangerous. Now facing Earth, but again, it's facing a part of Earth. But tomorrow, it's going to be rotated even more towards the center. And we're going not, not in the center, but maybe towards the center and have risen at the same time. And we'll see what that looks like. But this is today's sun. So these spots are serious business. From these spots, which are each of them, twice the size of Earth, so it's the size of two Earths. So we got six Earth-sized massive coronal holes opened up, and these coronal holes run very deep into the sun. I, I learned a lot um, since 2021, starting to film the sun, and I realized that in the news, they don't mention 95% of um, everything that's in the field and in the research, like, you know, the X-ray flux and understanding the different classes and what the differences are between coronal mass ejections and the sun. I know the, uh, and solar flares and the sunspots. I know online we can get that information, but in general, on the news, they're not talking about it. When you see that the UV ray um, is high, when you look at on the weather, well, they're not talking much and they don't talk much about these, um, like these spots, for example, how dangerous they are. These three spots, and only two spots actually, 2993 and 2994, the two ones at uh, the bottom there, are the ones that let go several CMEs. The 2994 let go a whole bunch of CMEs. 2993 letting go of these CMEs, which were luckily not facing Earth, but now they're uh, rotating towards Earth and they're facing Earth now. And this is just the beginning. And of course, 
look how intense the uh, solar rings are around them, but also the fire inside. They look like fireplaces, right? Like you're in a plane looking at someone uh, down camping with uh, big fires, and you could see the fires lifting up and all those the, that spotting and the plasma. I showed you the white specks that you can see at the beginning of the video, both on the 17th and the 18th, is what's lifting up off of the sun. So thousands of channels are talking about the sun, but not everyone's showing it. So at least everything that's on this channel comes from my research and all of us together, we're learning so much. Thanks for subscribing. Cause disclosure's coming soon Disclosure's coming soon